السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته يقول تعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وإن تدع وإن تدع وإن تدع مثقلة مثقلة إلى حملها لا يحمل منه شيء ولو كان ذا قربة إنما تنذر الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب وأقام الصلاة ومن تزكى فإنما يتزكى لنفسه وإلى الله المصير Allah عز وجل says in سورة فاطر verse 18 and a burdened soul cannot carry or cannot bear the burden of another and if one weighed down by burden should cry for another to carry its burden not aught of it shall be carried even though he be of near kin you warn only those who fear their Lord in secret and keep up prayer and whoever purifies himself he purifies himself only for the good of his own soul and to Allah is the eventual coming Sadaqallahu al al Last night we touched on the concept of government in Islam and we reached the conclusion that although there are opinions that differ within the madhab of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as amongst the ulama of the madhab of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as we agreed or we said that these three opinions at the very least agree that eventually a government will be established at the time of the Imam Salam Allah and we spoke a little bit about the establishment of this government and we said that inshallah in the coming nights we'll be discussing the tenets of this government now just before we continue on to tonight's topic just touching on last night's topic very very quickly regarding other madhahib of Islam, other schools of thought of Islam. The issue of government in Islam is unanimous. However, the establishment of this government or who runs this government, we differ. And mainly when it comes to the two uh, major madhahib schools of thought in Islam, uh, being from our Sunni brothers and we, the Shia. Our stance as Shia is clear. Khalifatullah. Yeah, the Khalifa of Allah Azza wa Jal is appointed by Allah Azza wa Jal. However, when it comes to the majority of Muslims, they have several opinions. And we have seen that Khilafah has been established in various ways. So there is the way that the first was established, and this was through Saqifah without going into historical details. It was through a gathering and the meetings of the elders and the tribes of the Muhajireen and the Ansar. And they elected the first. And then the first appointed the second. So how many methods do we have now? We have two methods. We have appointment by Saqifah and we have appointment by one Khalif appoints his successor. The third was appointed by Shura, a small council of six individuals, and they elected one from amongst them. Then we have the methodology in which, in which Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, came. So this is the first me fourth methodology, where the people came demanding that Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, take the reins of the Khilaf. So this is so far four methods. Then there is a fifth method and it is the method of inheritance. And this is how Banu Umayyah and later on Banu al-Abbas one inherited the Khilafah from the other. Then there is via military coup the way Banu al-Abbas took Khilafah from Banu Umayyah. Then there is the last methodology which our Sunni brothers believe in and it is the way that Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam ta'ala farajahu al-sharif it is the way Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam will come into Khilafah and in this methodology 
The Imam alayhi salam is appointed by Allah Azza wa Jal. So after all of these different methods, at the end of the day, we and our Sunni brothers and sisters agree on the final methodology. That the Imam is eventually appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyip, this Imam is now appointed, he comes to form his government. And we are not here to discuss the signs, inshallah, we'll discuss the signs in later nights if we have time. We are now taking a look, a glimpse at this government of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. What's its role, what does it do, what are its objectives? Amongst the most popular missions and objectives that we hear or that we know and we are familiar with regarding Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam is the concept of vengeance. Now we read in Dua and Nudba, Ayna Talibu Bidam al Maktuli bi Karbala, referring to Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam, whereas the one who calls for vengeance or calls for the vengeance of the blood of he who was killed in Karbala. We read in several of our narrations, for example, Narration by Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam who says يخرج القائم يوم السبت في عاشوراء اليوم الذي قتل فيه الحسين that the Imam alayhi salam he will come on a Saturday this is in one narration he will come out on a Saturday and it will be the day of Ashura the day that Al-Husayn alayhi salam was killed and in another narration he would be carrying or he and his followers will be carrying the banner of Ya Litharat al-Husayn calling for the vengeance of the killing of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam and seeking revenge for the blood of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. The verse that we opened up with is essential to understand this mission. Because if the Imam alayhi salam is going to seek revenge from those who killed Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, and we know that those who killed Imam al Hussein alayhi salam have been dead for over a thousand years. They have been dead for 1400 years. In fact, Mukhtar al Thaqafi, salamat yada, may Allah Azza wa Jal bless his hands, took direct vengeance on those responsible for killing Al Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam. And he was praised by our Imams alayhum salam for doing so. And in the narrations, it says that Mukhtar's revenge for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam brought cheerfulness into the houses of the Hawashim, of Banu Hashim, and made their women happy after sorrow. So Mukhtar took direct vengeance. So what is this vengeance that the Imam alayhi salam is talking about here? What is this vengeance that the Imam is supposed to take? How will he take vengeance from the killers of Al-Husayn alayhi salam if in the advent of the Imam they are not only killed but they have been dead for over 1400 years? Who would he take revenge from? The verse we opened up with is essential. Sallu ala Muhammad wa alimu. Allah Azza wa Jal in this verse in Surah Fatir is discussing the concept of burdens in Islam. The Quranic philosophy on a burden. Vengeance, brothers and sisters, is a burden. If I am to have a loved one of mine killed and we are going to assume that we live in a lawless land and I want to avenge this loved one, this is a burden on me. It is a great burden. And there is also a burden on the murderer. In the days of Jahiliyyah before Islam and unfortunately, unfortunately, it still exists today 
in some parts of the world, some parts of the Middle East, and unfortunately, it exists here in Sydney, as recent events have shown us. Where for some, they think that if an individual has killed a family member of mine, then not only am I permitted to take vengeance on that particular person, but on everybody related to him. If I can't get him, I'll get his brother, I'll get his cousin, I'll get his uncle, I'll get his relatives. Here in Sydney, I think the strangest thing, I'll get his mother. Huh? We're shooting each other's mothers now here. And we end up in this cycle of satanic violence where it is tit for tat innocent people who have nothing to do with anything are paying the price because of a relative or a friend or an associate committed a crime and we go and we punish innocent people like cowards. This is the way of jahiliyyah. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in this verse in Surah Fatir that no one is to carry the burden of another. Nobody. If you have wronged me, you have wronged me. Not your relatives. If I have wronged you, it is only I who has wronged you. Not your family members, not your brothers, not your friends. No one else is responsible or will be held accountable for your actions and your negligence. This is satanic. This is the way of jahiliyyah. This is the behavior of idol worshippers. This is the behavior of those who used to dance naked around the Kaaba. Who used to worship gods of dates and eat these dates when they were hungry. This is not the logic of the Quran. This is not the logic of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. This is not the lo This is not logic at all. This belongs in the animal kingdom. Okay. So Quran eliminates this possibility. Quran says, if Yazid ibn Muawiyah la'anahullah killed al Husayn ibn Ali. If Shimir la'anahullah killed al Husayn ibn Ali. The army of Umar ibn Sa'ad and Umar ibn Sa'ad la'anahumallah killed al Husayn ibn Ali. And they have been killed already. And Al Mukhtar took vengeance. And this vengeance that we are talking about is definitely not a vengeance on anyone else. Otherwise, Imam Al Mahdi السلام, will be conflicting or contradicting the Holy Quran. Imam Al Zaman, السلام, like his fathers before him, is Al Quran and Natiq. He is the walking, talking Quran. He is justice embodied. Does not contradict the book of Allah. The Imam السلام, is not independent of the Holy Quran. He does not have an opinion other than the book of Allah. He is the embodiment of the book of Allah. So, what is this vengeance? Is the Imam like some ignorant amongst the Shia claim going to come? And kill Muslims of other madahib for the vengeance of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. I challenge such individuals to provide one narration. One narration. Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam, after he is struck by Ibn Muljam la'anahullah. What's he say regarding his right to vengeance? He says to his sons, Al Hassan and Hussein, alayhum as salam, he says, If I die, one strike for one strike. He struck me once, one strike for one strike, and the debt is settled. If I survive, then it is up to me on how I deal with him. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib Then there are some ignorant here. Yes, the Imam will come and these Yazidis 
And these people that love Yazid ibn Muawiyah and the Imam will come and he's going to create a sectarian war. None of our Imams incited sectarianism. Not one of our Imams has ever incited the Shia against other Muslims. In fact, if we look at the Sunnah of the Ahlul Bayt, we find the contrary. We find the Imams praying for them. We find Imam Sadiq encouraging us to do what? Join them in their congregations. Walk in their funerals. Eat from their food. Marry from them. This is the sunnah and the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. Does Imam al-Zaman alayhi as -salam, does he have a different sunnah to the sunnah of Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq alayhi as -salam? Is he from a different religion? We see the mercy of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi as -salam in our maraji' at the time of fitna. Even when our mosques were being blown up. When our Husseiniyat were being blown up. When the shrines of our Imams alayhum salam were being blown up. Our maraji' were at the forefront of maintaining this unity. Not once did we have one of our maraji' come and say, they blow up a mosque of ours, we're going to blow up a mosque of theirs. They blew up a shrine of ours, we're going to blow up a shrine of this. Never in the history of Tashayyur did this ever happen. So definitely the Imam alayhi salam is not seeking a sectarian war. The Imam abides by the Holy Quran. The understanding of this thar what this vengeance is, we need to look and gather the narrations regarding this vengeance and this revenge and the ad'iyah which have been mentioned or which mention this revenge and then measure it against the Holy Quran and we will see that Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam is thar Allah just as Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam was thar Allah. Huh, we read in the ziyarah of Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam, As-salamu alayka ya thar Allahi wa ibn thari. Peace be upon you, O vengeance of God and the son of his vengeance. Meaning Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. When did we see Amir al-Mu'mineen salamullahi alayhi? Or Imam al-Husayn salamullahi alayhi? Go after the Muslims. Or hold people who had nothing to do with an incident accountable. We come to the Holy Quran. There's a very interesting verse in the Holy Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Imran, verse 21. Look at this verse. Allah Azza wa Jal here is addressing a particular group from Ahlul Kitab who live in Medina. And this particular group are giving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi a hard time. And they are instigating the mushrikeen against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Rasulullah is bringing forward his proofs to them through their books, through logic, and they don't want to heed to his call. And they are instigating and funding and arming the mushrikeen against the Holy Messenger. Allah Azza wa Jal addresses them. What's he saying? He's speaking to the Holy Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi regarding them. He says, Inna This is Surah Al-Amran, verse 21. 
إن الذين يكفرون بآيات الله ويقتلون النبيين بغير حق ويقتلون الذين يأمرون بالقسط من الناس فبشرهم بعذاب أليم. Surely as for those who disbelieve in the communications of Allah, يعني have disbelieved in what Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله has brought forth. And slay the prophets unjustly. And slay those among men who enjoin justice. Announce to them a painful chastisement. What's very odd about this verse. Is that Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking in the present tense. Regarding this group from the Ahlul Kitab. He's speaking in the present context. He's saying what? He's saying, وَيَقْتُلُونَ الَّذِينَ وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ وَيَقْتُلُونَ الَّذِينَ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْقِسْتِ يَقْتُلُونَ Not قَتَلُوا Not they have killed in the past. No. They are currently killing prophets. The prophets of Allah Azza wa Jal. You say, Ya Rasool Allah, at the very least, between you and the last prophet, according to most of our narrations in history, it's about 600 years. Why is Allah Azza wa Jal accusing this group or addressing this group and labeling them as killers of the prophets? And there is no blood of the prophets on their hands. Allah Jalla Jalalu here in this verse is telling you who vengeance can be ex ex extracted on, exacted on. That even though so-and-so is not directly involved in this oppression, in the killing of the prophets. However, if so-and-so belongs to the same agenda. And they are partners in the same mission. And they are soldiers in that same front. And they are looking to establish the same injustice. Here is where you exact vengeance. The mission of Imam al-Zaman alayhi salam, the vengeance of Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam, is not some tribal vengeance. You killed my grandfather, I'm going to kill your grandfather. He's not Ashairi, the Imam. He doesn't have this tribal mentality. He doesn't belong to a gang. He's not a mobster. He says, Hujjatullah. This is the Quran. This is Allah's vesurgeon on earth. This is an embodiment of Allah's will. Does not act of emotion. The Imam alayhi salam here, when we refer to him as the revenge of Allah, the same way we have referred to Hussein alayhi salam as the vengeance of Allah, and Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as the vengeance of Allah. Meaning they will exact vengeance on the agenda of kufr and shirk. Do you think, brothers and sisters, that the blood of Al Hussein alayhi salam, you can seek vengeance from it, for it, and even out the score by exacting this vengeance on the perpetrators? You know, we have in our riwayat that Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam does not only exact vengeance on the killers of al-Husayn alayhi salam or for the blood of al-Husayn but also for the blood of Fatima sallallahu alayhi and the ribs of Fatima. Do you think any amount of worldly vengeance will bring justice to the ribs of Fatima alayhi salam? Wallahi, if the cosmos were to be burned, the heavens and the earth and everything in between them, it would not bring justice or vengeance for a tear in the eyes of Fatima alayhi salam. Or for a moment of fright in the heart of Sukaina alayhi salam. Or for the shackles around Zainab salam alayhi salam. Do you know how heavy this is in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal? To have the daughters of Muhammad, 
not my daughter, not your daughter, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, paraded in front of men with their faces uncovered. What vengeance are you talking about? The vengeance that needs to happen needs to be on the grand scale, on the same scale as the injustice that took place. Mukhtar sought the physical vengeance. Is that enough? Imam al Zaman alayhi salam. He exacts vengeance and the only vengeance which Allah Azza wa Jal. This is apart from the Akhirah. The vengeance of the Akhirah, we leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jahannam wa bi'sa al Masir. Jahannam wa bi'sa al Masir. But because Allah Azza wa Jal is just, then a worldly justice also needs to happen. There needs to be a worldly vengeance. And this raya, ya li tharat al Hussein, and not just al Hussein alayhi salam, we read in Dua al Nudba that Imam al Mahdi alayhi salam doesn't only seek vengeance for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Look, look what we read. And pay attention to how this vengeance and what this vengeance means. That this vengeance is one pillar in an entire system, in a whole mission. It's an essential. Pillar. It's a foundation in this mission. Aina sahibu yawm al fatah. Where is the patron of the day of conquest? Wana shiru rayat al huda. And he who stretches or spreads out the flags of true guidance. Aina mu'allifu shamli al salah wa al rida. Where is the one who unifies? The dispersed parts of uprightness and contentment. Aina talibu bi dhuhul al anbiya wa abna al anbiya. Where is the one who demands the vengeance of the prophets and the children of the prophets? Where is the one? Aina talibu bi dam al maktul bi karbala. Where is the one demanding vengeance for the blood of the one slain in Karbala? Aina al Mansur ala man atada alayhi waftara. Where is the one who is granted aid against those who have transgressed and oppressed against him? Imam al Zaman alayhi salam, the mission of vengeance begins with conquest. Conquest. Begins with uniting the believers, gathering those who believe in good and who believe in his mission, uniting and strengthening them. Imam al Zaman alayhi salam, his vengeance, before it gets to the killers of Al Hussein alayhi salam, starts with the killers of the prophets of Allah azza wa jal, i.e., those who have continued in this agenda. Those who are in the camp of istikbar. Those who are in the camp of arrogance, global arrogance, global pride, oppression, colonialism. Those who have enslaved mankind. Those who have fought the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal and their message. Those who today... Look at the laws of God, the laws of humanity, everything which is humane and implement on earth everything contradictory to this. This is the vengeance of Imam al-Zaman alayhi salam. You want vengeance for the blood of Hussein salam alayhi alayhi? The only worldly vengeance we can get or the only worldly vengeance that we accept, that Imam al-Mahdi accepts, is to tear down the entire platform, the entire agenda of kufr and oppression. All of it needs to come down. 
so that it may never return again. This is the vengeance. We refer to him or the imams or he has been referred to by the imams السلام, as Thar Allah, the vengeance of Allah because he exacts his vengeance against the enemies of Allah. Those who have sent humanity into a downward spiral. Who have corrupted humanity on every level that we know. Every level you can think of. Whether they be from those who claim to be from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi or otherwise. And we have noticed in history from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that the munafiqeen, the hypocrites, those who claim to be Muslims, however in their hearts there is hatred for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we find that the disbelievers and the wicked from the Ahlul Kitab, not all Ahlul Kitab, but there are those who are wicked from amongst the Ahlul Kitab. We find that these people have been allies and helpers. We know in the history of Islam that at the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there are those amongst the monks and the rabbis who came to Abu Sufyan and they said to him, here is our money, here is our weapons. You, the children of Umayyah, take hold of this ummah. And in an opinion, they were not innocent of the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Nor are they innocent of the blood of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Was it not under the direction of Sarjan that Yazid, you think Yazid is intelligent enough to concoct such a plan? Yazid was an alcoholic who loved to entertain himself with monkeys. You think he was intelligent enough to concoct such a plan? Had he not been instigated, had he not been funded and encouraged by the Romans to carry out such an action, you think he is capable of this? Do not think for a moment that they are innocent of the blood of Ahlul Bayt. And we see the same today. Look at the state of the believers. Look at the fronts where the believers are being fought today. We find the hypocrites in this ummah. The Amawiyun in this ummah. Are allies hand in hand with the disbelievers. And the powers of oppression and colonialism and capitalism. We find that those who occupy our lands today sit at the banquets of the powers of colonialism and amongst them if you want to talk about who the Imam exacts vengeance upon amongst them is a small group of those who claim to shayyot those who claim love for the Imam alayhi salam. Those who claim support for the Imam alayhi salam. Those who sit in the majalis of al Hussein alayhi salam and cry. You think crying for al Hussein, simply crying for al Hussein alayhi salam is enough to make you counted amongst those who are in the camp of Al Hussein. Do you know who cried for Al Hussein? 
when he saw the women and their children being brought into the court of Ibn Ziyad and the head of Al-Husayn sallallahu alayhi on a spear, you know who cried for Al-Husayn alayhi salam? Umar ibn Sa'id. Umar ibn Sa'id. The head of Yazid's army who wanted to kill Al Hussein alayhi salam so he may secure a position as governor of Ar Rai in Persia. La'anahullah. Today we have those who cry for Al Hussein alayhi salam yet sit at the banquets of the Taghut. They sit at the banquets and the gatherings of the oppressors. They receive fundings from them. They meet their politicians. They support them. They travel with them. They apply and implement their policies in our ummah, amongst our youth. And never do you see them standing up for the oppressed. Never. And if by some chance, because of haya, because they are embarrassed, they stand up for the oppressed, they never mention the great oppressor from the disbelievers. They'll go to the weaker one and say, look at this Muslim, Saudi Arabia. But they will never question the masters of Saudi Arabia. The greater Satan. Never. They will make it appear like a sectarian thing. No, this is Saudi Arabia. Sunni is killing Shias. The United States has nothing to do with this. This is, this is how they will talk to you. Because they think our youth are stupid. They think this ummah is stupid. Our youth are amongst the most intelligent in the world. Wallah. And the foresight they have, these so-called ulama underestimate you. Do not let them fool you. And drag you into these sectarian conflicts and discussions and wars so that the greater Satan is not approached. Look at this alliance. Example. The hypocrites of the Muslim world killing the believers of Yemen. Funded, supported, armed, aided, political coverage by the thought of the disbelievers. This is whom Imam al-Zaman alayhi salam will exact vengeance on. The Imam salam alayhi in all of our rawayat and all the adaya attributed to the Imam alayhi salam ones. The Imam comes to aid the oppressed on every level. On every level. And the best vengeance for the oppressed is to eradicate not just the oppressor the oppressor but the oppression also and the foundations of this oppression must be eradicated and if as we read in dua and nudba in order for this to happen there needs to be a yawm al fatah there needs to be a day of conquest and there needs to be a gathering of the believers, meaning that this Imam is going to need some form of aid and strength. It is not that the Imam, Salamullahi Alaihi, comes and then by himself, single handedly, Imam Al Mahdi Alayhi Salam takes out this magic sword and yalla. This is not what happens. If this was the case, then Hussein alayhi salam would have done this in Karbala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would have done this during the time uh, when he was in Medina, eradicated the kuffar, 
eradicated the Roman and Byzantine Empire and established the Empire of Islam and Taha. Finish. This is not the case. Brothers and sisters, and inshallah, in the last few nights when we discuss the role of you and I in the time of occultation, what our job is, we will say that deliverance and salvation is not something that falls from the sky. Never has Allah Azza wa Jal, never, read the Holy Quran, delivered a nation unless they wanted it. Even deliverance and salvation of his prophets and awliya demanded an effort. Always an effort. Whether it be a small effort or a major effort, Allah Azza wa Jal demands effort. Musa alayhi salam coming to save Banu Israel, Fir'aun behind him and his troops, they get to the ocean. Does Allah Azza wa Jal just split the ocean for him and tell him Musa cross? No. Strike with your staff, Musa. Allah demands from Musa to strike the ocean with his staff. Strike it with your staff, then I'll split the ocean. He required an effort from Musa alayhi salam. Maryam salamullahi alayha The pains of birth and delivery And she's now tired She's just delivered Isa alayhi salam She is hungry and weak She's sitting beneath a date tree Does Allah azza wa jal just drop the dates on her And tell her eat ya Maryam Huzzi ilayki he says to her. Shake the palm tree ya Maryam And dates will fall Dates will fall, but shake the tree. So imagine the effort required for the grand salvation, the great salvation, the final salvation of mankind, the salvation which saves us all. It would need a great and collective effort. We're not talking about Saving Maryam from hunger and thirst, salam Allah. We're not talking about splitting one ocean. We are talking about bringing down the foundation of the regime of Satan and delivering humanity from thousands of years of darkness into eternal light. We are talking about the grand finale. So the effort must be grand. The efforts must be equal to the mission. Bring victory to Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal will bring you victory. It is not enough. Allahumma ajjali waliyika al-faraj. While you are sitting at the banquets of the Taghut. It is not enough if you are going to be afraid. I'm not going to say this because I don't want to get in trouble by the government. I don't want to bring trouble to my family. Many said this to Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam. Many of those who claim to support Imam Al-Hussein alayhi salam, the minute they saw Ibn Ziyad come into Kufa, nothing. They don't know Imam Al Hussein anymore. Nothing. Claimed Tashayu the day before. Prayed Jama'ah behind Muslim. Salamullah. The second they saw the army of Ibn Ziyad, some of them went further than that. To prove that they have nothing to do with Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. They went with the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad to Karbala. They joined the army of Umar ibn Sa'ad in Karbala. There is no room for cowardice in the establishment of the government of Imam al-Zaman alayhi salam. There is no room for fear. There is no room for the weak. There is no room for being lazy. We ask Allah azza wa jal to make us amongst those who affirm in their faith 
who have removed the fear of this dunya and the fear of the taghut from their hearts and have replaced it with confidence in Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. Allahumma ajjil li waliyika al-faraj wa al-afiyat wa al-nas. Waj'alna min a'wanihi wa ansarih wa shi'atihi wa muhibbihi wa al-mustashadeen bayna yadayi. اللهم اكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة بحضوره وعجل لنا ظهوره إنهم يرونه بعيدا ونراه قريبا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل يا رب على محمد وآله الطاهرين وعجل فرجهم ولعن عدوه صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ما خاب من تمسك بكم سادتي أمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما يا غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء يوم القرر المظلوم سفيرا يرسل السفرا مسلم جمع أولاده وصاهم على النصرة جمع عائلة المغيوب وعلى حسين وصاهم خمس أولاد حشموهم حميد وعاتق وياهم بيض وجهي يا أولادي وهمل دمعة على فرقاهم قلهم يا سواد العين وعد منا نفد الدين بعدك ما نعوف حسين ونفد الروح يا أبويا فدا لمدلل الزهرة شو يقول مسلم أنا موعود من عمي على الكرار يذبحوني يجيكم خبر بعد أيام من القصر للقاع ذبوني يفصل راسي عن جسمي وبالأسواق يسحبوني وراسي على الثرى مترب وقطرة ماي ما أشرب ولا حد يمي يتقرب وعدد لي مصايبكم وخلي الروح روح متفطرة يا يا 
The day the messenger was to leave his loved ones behind, Muslim gathered his children and said, I entrust you with this will of mine. I entrust you with your uncle Hussein's allegiance and loyalty. Five boys, Hamid and Atika, accepted the obedience of royalty. He said, make me proud in the eyes of Fatima to Zahra and Ali and said, his farewells with tears flowing for what will soon be they promised to serve the imam with their entire existence muslim cried and foretold them of what will happen to him in the distance saying my uncle ali promised i will be greeted by coffins with slaughter you will receive news they threw my body from tower tops thirsty with no water drag my body through the coffin streets in this state the Lord I will meet but no one will come forward before this fate to inform me of my darling children's tragic state of my daughters running from burning tents in to chains after they kill my beloved master Hussein, or of my sons who were killed mercilessly for no crime. This is the tragedy of every child of mine. After the people of Kufa sent many letters to Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi saying we invite you to come to Kufa as we have no Imam to guide us through you Allah will unite us on the path of truth Imam Hussein wrote a letter back I am sending my brother my cousin Muslim ibn Aqil who is my family's most trusted representative I have instructed him to write to me about your situation circumstances and opinions when Muslim arrived to Kufa more than 18,000 people appeared before him and pledged allegiance to Imam Hussein. Muslim was encouraged by the overwhelming response that he sent a letter to Abu Abdullah to proceed to Kufa. Bashir ibn Nu'man was the governor of Kufa and did not interfere or harm Muslim as he had respect for Ahlul Bayt's family members. This was seen as a sign of weakness to the supporters of Yazid and by recommendation of Sir John Muawiyah's advisor Yazid sent Ibn Ziyad disguised as Imam Hussein he entered Kufa while covered and people cheered as he arrived once he settled in the castle he gave a sermon warning the people of Kufa of the punishment of crucifixion for anyone aiding or sheltering those who scheme against Yazid the fear slowly crept in the hearts of the Kufans and those 18,000 supporters became less and less. Muslim was joined in congregational prayers with a great number. By the time he was done his taslim, looking over his shoulder, there was but a mere four supporters. He whispered, Ya Ashbagir Rijali wa lastum bi Rijal, O you who resemble men, but are far from it. The strict orders of the Kufan police led Muslim to Hani ibn Urwa's house. He hid there until a spy by the name of Ma'qal tricked Hani and got him arrested and tortured for aiding Muslim. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad ordered his men to sever Hani's head and they threw his body down a well. 
Muslim realized here the seriousness of the situation and that Imam Hussein would come to a trap set up for him in Kufa. He tried to escape toward Imam Hussein, but the gates of Kufa were closed and spies were sent to trace Muslim. Imagine now, Muslim alone. Walking in the dark streets of Kufa, hungry and thirsty, with no one to aid him. Imagine the feeling of being in an unfamiliar place, wandering in the darkness as treachery and death followed you. His tired feet carried him until he reached the house of a lady by the name of Ta'a. He asked her, Amat Allah, can I have a drink of water? She quenched his thirst and closed her doors. Later she came out to find him still sitting at her doorstep. تقلنا واقف على بابي ودمع العين سايل واقف على بابي ودمع العين سايل جنك من السؤال لو عندك رسايل شوفتك والله من الذي كان وسايل جنة غريب بهالمدينة وما لك أصحاب قال خير غريب وغربتي دون الغرايب جم من غريب تغرب وحصل حبايب بس أنا بهالديرة بقيت بلا والبايعوني داسوا البيعة بنتراب قالها وعين مستديرة أنا لا أخال عندي ولا عشيرة أنا مسلم أنا مسلم الفاقد نصيرة أنا الحيرتي ما جرت حيرة أنا الحيرتي ما جرت حيرة شي عاصم why do you stand at my door are you a beggar or are you one who has news or a letter? You seem like a stranger to these lands with no companions. Did you stray from your path or were you abandoned? He tells her I'm a stranger unlike any other to these lands. How many other strangers come along and find a helping hand? I have no family, no companions, and the people block broke allegiance they gave. He says with his white teary eyes, I'm surrounded by cowards and far from the brave. The people have the truth for, for a worldly bribe. I am Muslim, I am Muslim alone with no family or oh my tribe she says where are you from where is your family and kin your state is hard on me I do not know you I can't let you in you look lost and far from your home so far tell me oh stranger who you are he says waqfati sahba ala al لا معويز اجيت ولا طلاب بني غاشم عمامي وفخر الانساب وعم المرتضى حامل حمية
It's hard for me to stand at your door. I did not come needy, nor am I poor. Banu Hashim are my uncles, as honorable as can be. And my uncle is the greatest warrior of Islam, Ali. She, t- she, she was in shock and began to cry and slap her face in shame, saying, A'adhurni Muslim, A'adhurni ya Muslim. طال انتظارك اتفضل سيدي والدار دارك اتصيح مسلم ضيفنا اليوم يا يوم مبارك اعذرني سيدي خافا دهنتك صدقني يا مسلم ما عرفتك لو انا ادري من اهلك ما نشدتك شلون اعتذر انا من الزجية شلون اعتذر انا من الزجية forgive me muslim for i made you wait long Take this as your home where you belong. Muslim is our guest. This day is surely blessed. Forgive me, master. I did not know your name to be addressed. If I knew who you were, I would have quickly let you in. How will I face Muhammad Ali and Fatima with this grave sin? She lets him in. Puts him food and water, but he only drinks a little and spends the night in worship. Her son notices her entering the guest room repeatedly and asks her about this. She tells him to keep it a secret and she says she has sheltered Muslim. He replies saying you have done a great deed dear mother. But he soon betrayed his guest and told Ibn Ziyad of Muslim's location in return turn for golden position the morning comes and Tawa walks in and finds Muslim in worship she asks have you slept at all my son he said I slept for a short while and I saw my uncle Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali telling me al-ajal 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 hasten your arrival Muslim she asked what is the meaning he replied I will be killed this day soon as he finished his sentence they hear Ibn Ziyad's army outside look at this woman Tawaran and brought his sword and armor said O Muslim remind them of the battles of your uncle Amir al-Mu'mineen he says Ya Ta'at Shaj'ini Ya Ta'at Shaj'ini Ba'ammi Haydar Tidhakrini والله لا رجمع يجيني ما دام صم صام بيميني طوعا you encourage me and remind me of my uncle علي I will send them on their way as long as my sword remains with me he calls out اقسمت اقسمت ان لا اقتل الا حرا وان وجدت الموت شيئا نكرا i swore i will die a free man and i do not fear death he attacked ferociously, breaking the door and using it, using it as a shield, calling out, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad, Ya Ali, fighting like a true Hashimi. This is the nephew of Amir al Mu'minin. They surrounded him and covered the rooftops. They could not restrain him. Some dug traps and others began to throw stones, burning logs and arrows. And until he was covered in wounds then a man named Bakir ibn Umran promised him safe passage Muslim replied you people cannot keep your word you are betrayers Bakir struck Muslim while he rested till his mouth bled severely but Muslim fought back until he fell into one of their traps. They dug, they captured him and took him to Ibn Ziyad. 
when he's brought before Ibn Ziyad, Ibn Ziyad walks in, Muslim refuses to say his salams, Shamar la'anahullah tells him say salam to your master, he replies my master, my only master is Hussain, Muslim asks for water, they bring him, they bring the first bowl, it fills with, with blood from his mouth, then the second and third, his teeth fall into it and he says by Allah it surely is not for me Ibn Ziyad orders Ibn Al-Ash'ath to take Muslim to the top of the tower behead him and throw his body from the top they take him he then requests a pray to Rak'at, doing so. Then he turns towards where Imam Hussein is and cries out. The God laughs and says, such a man who performs a revolution does not cry. Muslim replies, La wallah, ma ala hali bakat, walakin buka'i ala al-Husayn, buka'i ala al-Sayyidi wa mawlaya aba abdillah. By Allah, I do not cry for myself, I cry for Hussein, my tears for my master Abba Abdullah as if I can imagine him calling out Hussain lo minni wassalit al khabar bil safar ya Hussain eid al nazar wala jibu ya Zainab bil safar khaf bil kufa yumur bih al qahar tarash ibn arshi tirmi bhaja وتنظر أخو غراس فوق رمح استقر ما say if I could speak to you now I'd tell you to turn back the ambush awaits you they've set their trap do not bring Zainab the women and children here what they might encounter in this place I truly question and fear captives meet rocks and flames as a welcome while the people cheer and I cannot fathom what Zainab feels watching your head parading on a spear Ajarakumullah he said in salam to Abba Abdullah they struck his neck with a blade they threw his body from the tower crushing his bones they tied his body and harnessed body to horses and drag them through the streets of Kufa. Rahimallah man nada wa muslima wa mazluma wa ghani wa mazluma Two messengers left Kufa in a hurry and the li delivered the news to Imam Hussain. The Imam broke down and cried uncontrollably and asked the women to bring Hamida, daughter of Muslim. He held her close in his lap. He began to stroke her head. She said, oh uncle, you are but why do you stroke my head like that of an orphan? It's gilla, ya ammi, ya ammi, boya, wena. Min zaman ma bayan alena. Akbar bin minna ma tijena, tijena. Yimkin naboya gatlina. Uncle, uncle, where is my father? It's been long since. Since he's crossed my side what we haven't heard from him have they killed him or am I right 
Hamid my darling, Imam Hussein says, Hamid my darling, I am now your father. She says, Uncle, but I have a father. Muslim is my father. Uncle, why do you wipe my head like that of orphans? Did anything happen to my father? Uncle, oh, Uncle, where is my father? She says, Why do you do these movements? Imam Hussein tells her, your father has been martyred and you are now an orphan. She cries out, wa abata, wa muslima. Wa ka'anni biha taqool. Awgaf yada'an bidiyar al-ahbab. أشم ريحة أبويا الفارقاني ودوني على قبر خلني حاجي وقل الدمع من عقبك عماني شوف الحبل بويا السوى بالإيد صغيرة على اليسار والهم لواني من يوم الرحيت ومفارق النوم كون وياك بالكوفة وعساني بويا بويا من غمض عيونك وقت الوداع بيا وبيش ما يرحم زماني أقعد بويا جيت وجبت الماي وياي انت الترتوي يا الأرواني عسب القصر صربو ينخسفة القاع يا الرماك من القصر ردو رماني هم مثلي أشوف بيدك حبال عدوك لا رعاك ولا رعاني صدق يا الغالي بالشارع يجروك مثل ما بالحبل ذاك السباني I stand here in the home of my loved ones. I smell father's essence linger in the air. Hamida says, Those who lost someone dear know how deep the pain runs. A feeling that can't be compared Take me to his resting place So I can tell him of my ordeal Complain to what's left of his body and face And say I refuse to sleep and meals Show my father the marks from ropes and chains I'm too young this for this pain and sorrow Trials poured on us captives like rain Wishing without you we don't see tomorrow Father who struck your holy neck Who threw you from the tower top the ones who killed you left my soul in a wreck they tied and whipped me and would not stop I bought you water here drink so I can too I know you stay thirsty get up father I've come to you these evil men had no mercy I know notice you have marks on your wrists just like mine father Father, look and see They dragged your body in Kufa's midst Just like to Tusham, they dragged me Inna lillahu wa inna ilayhi raji'oon Wa saya'lamu alladheena zhalamu ayya munqalabin yanqalibun Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen يا كاشف السوء اكشف السوء عنا يا الله اللهم شاف مرضانا وفك أسرانا وانصر مجاهدينا ولأرواح علمائنا وأمواتنا رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات